national and regional executive members of our party, the APC, the media, fellow countrymen and women, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. First and foremost, I want to use this platform to congratulate the NDC for electing former President John Dramani Mahama again as their 2024 presidential candidate. And also let me congratulate the MPP for electing Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia as their presidential candidate for the 2024 general elections. Congratulations, my big brothers. I wish you all well as we all battle for the highest office. The APC party is currently organizing elections at the various polling stations across Ghana and will end the elections of the polling station executives by the 30th of December, 2023. The party has fixed it to 13th January, 2024 to complete all constituency executive elections. The regional election will be held on the 26th and the 27th of January, 2024. And the National Delegate Congress is slated to be on the 10th February, 2024. Currently, parliamentary candidates' primaries are ongoing in the various constituencies across Ghana, and the party is using this press conference to urge all aspirants to continue with their good work and support the party. The party is also urging all parliamentary aspirants who intend to contest on the ticket of the APC to kindly go to the party's headquarters and pick up their forms. Ladies and gentlemen, Ghana is bleeding. The next generation have nothing to hang on. Many Ghanaians have lost hope in those who wield political power in our country. Our youth are crying for jobs and opportunities to build their future. Sadly, those in power have no clue about good governance and leadership. The economic situation is worsened by the hour and transferring poverty to the younger generation due to lack of jobs and opportunity for our future leaders are now, due to lack of jobs and opportunity for our future leaders, our future leaders are now gamblers and little players, into bracket, betting. A situation that is dear to my heart. Unfortunately, the two major political parties are proposing tax incentives to lure our children and our grandchildren into playing Luto instead of providing jobs, opportunities, support, and assistance to help them combat this dangerous addiction. They are rather encouraging them with flimsy taxes promises. The MPP and the NDC politicians have sinned against this nation. Our debt stock is now 600 billion Ghana cities, representing 75% of GDP. And we have nothing to show for our borrowing. Inflation is almost 48%, and Ghana has been downgraded to CCCC plus by S&P which means that we cannot afford to even pay interest on borrowing. And Ghana is not credible enough to borrow again. The IMF now has an office in Ghana overseeing how we spend their bailout. In the last budget presentation by the finance minister, the minister is proposing to spend over 227 billion Ghana cities and a projected revenue of 170 billion cities. What that means is that Ghana is going to borrow again to finance its deficit. Ghana has maintained its spot as African most indebted nation to the International Monetary Fund, into bracket IMF. Ghana's debt to IMF increased by 35.5% over the period under the consideration per data from the IMF quarterly finances for July ending. Ghana's corruption is Ghana's biggest problem. 
corruption is Ghana's biggest problem. Mismanagement and wastage of government resources is on the rise, leading to wrong decision making and failure. Most institutions in Ghana are now corrupt. The battle against corruption and poor economic performance cannot be won until there is radical public sector reforms, especially in local government. A strong government machinery is very essential in state building. Mr. Chairman, interestingly, these same leaders that have brought us this far have presented themselves to be voted in 2024 as our leaders. We cannot demand better leadership and change. When we don't make that choice of change, we need. The APC and Dr. Hassan Erga is your hope for the 2024 general elections and beyond. The recent flooding in the Volta region has left many residents homeless, thousand displaced, and instead of the government making it a national disaster priority that demands immediate national emergency to mitigate the situation, as usual, politicians rather turn it a campaign disparity. When will we, as a nation, see ever learn one thing right and prepare adequately. We never learn lessons, but always sweep everything under the carpet. Ladies and, gen and gentlemen, in February, I will be inviting Ghanaians from all walks of life to deliver a lecture on alternative economic solutions to our alien economy and the way forward for our nation, Ghana. The theme of the lecture will be called I'm not here to blame anyone. The maiden lecture will focus on Ghana's economic revolution and economic independence. Today's press conference will focus on the issue of the 24-hour economy. Ladies and gentlemen, lately, I hear the debate of one of the APC's policy, which is captured in the, our 2020 manifesto, the 24-hour production, three-shift system for companies, businesses, and workers. It is one of the policies Dr. Hassan Ayurga and the APC would have implemented if Ghanaians had given Dr. Hassan Ayurga the nod in the 2020 general election. Let's set the record straight. The 24-hour economy is the brainchild of Dr. Hassan Ayurga and the APC. Interestingly, the NDC and former President Mahama have adopted the 24-hour economy as their main campaign policy for the 2024 general elections. Sadly, sadly, former President Mahama and the NDC are struggling to explain, while Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and the MPP are also struggling to understand the 24-hour economy policy. If you go through the APC 2020 manifesto, page 31, item 30, page 44, G, and page 46, number 12, it stated 24-hour production, three-shift system for businesses, companies, and workers. I'm here to explain to you how the 24-hour system works so that the NDC will not be confused and Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya will also not be confused in understanding the policy. African nations, including Ghana, sleep 16 hours a day and work only eight hours. A nation that sleeps more than it works cannot be economically independent and achieve economic development and growth. Ghana is not producing enough our nation is not manufacturing enough, definitely do not have enough industries. 80% of Ghanaian youth are unemployed. Ghana imports practically everything, including food to consume. Our country is a dependent nation and in serious economic crisis. The reason behind my 24-hour economy proposal in the 2020 manifesto. Now, explanation. The 24-hour policy is designed to split Ghana's workforce into three groupings called the three-shift system. 
where every Ghanaian will work eight hours daily. The first shift will start from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. The second shift workers will begin from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m., whilst the third shift will continue from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. This makes the 24-hour cycle. The main aim of the policy is to increase productivity, create jobs through production, manufacturing, construction, services, and industrialization, and as well have a vibrant economy during the day and the night. The policy will allow flexibility of working hours, reduce corruption, stop the delay in government businesses. Businesses, workers, and companies will be running full capacity in the three-shift system. Full capacity in the three-shift system. And not a situation of putting two people to run night shift by some institution as claimed by my brother on the other side as 24-hour economy policy. Restaurants, transport services, security, law enforcement agencies, hospital will all run full capacity under the policy. A 24-hour economy offers a range of benefits for employers, employees, and the economy. Job will be executed quickly, less traffic in major cities, more jobs can be executed at the same time, less crime, more customer service, the shift revolves every two weeks, every two weeks, and continue. Finally, I believe the three-shift system will bring about numerous benefits to the Ghanaian economy, the workforce, and industry. By allowing employees, companies, to work three-shift system that extend into the night, companies can boost productivities and save costs and increase revenue. Furthermore, employees can enjoy an improved work-life balance, greater flexibility, and enhanced job satisfaction. While there may be potential challenges in implementing the policy, such as safety concerns, infrastructure challenges, and legal and regulatory issues, these can be addressed through proper planning, consultation, and preparation. We have seen successful implementation of the three chief system by many global companies, such as Amazon, IBM, HSBC, as well as Sri Lanka's companies such as Dialog Asetia, HCS Technologies, and various manufacturing companies. Therefore, I call upon industry leaders in Ghana to consider implementing the three chief system the 24-hour production and reap the benefits. By doing so, we can create a more comprehensive and innovative workforce that can drive the Ghanaian economy towards greater heights. In conclusion, the 24-hour economy is not only a practical solution to the economic crisis and challenges we face in Ghana, but an opportunity for companies, businesses, to create a sustainable and a better working force for their employees whilst increasing their operational efficiency and productivity. An adoption of the 24-hour economy and the three-shift system in Ghana will dramatically increase the number of new jobs and make our economy self-sufficient and sustainable. I call on employers, academia, government agencies, entrepreneurs, politicians, to join force to effectively combat dependency, poverty, and employment in Ghana through the implementation of Dr. Hassan's Ayariga 24-hour production plan and the three-shift system. APC, we find solutions for Ghana. Thank you for coming.